This is probably the hardest video that I've ever had to make in regards to the Arkham franchise. Because this is how it happened. This is how Rocksteady killed the Batman franchise. The following video will contain spoilers about uh, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League. So you've been warned. Um, there was a leak that happened and uh, it wasn't just on Reddit, it was on Twitter. Some of us were unfortunate to see actual clips, screenshots, hear audio. It's all real. As much as we would like to wake up from this horrible nightmare, we can't. The game comes out in two months and if I wasn't a content creator, I wouldn't bother with it. Unfortunately, I have a niched audience that expects certain things, especially from DC properties like Batman and Batman games. And since this falls in that jurisdiction, then if I don't cover it, then they'll just go to another channel. And uh, <laughs> I don't have a choice, even though I already know everything that happens in the game, allegedly. And uh, I really don't care for it. This uh, leak is getting a big emotional reaction from people as well. And rightly so, because it does things that are just really twisting the knife uh, in people's guts. And it hurts. I mean, not like being stabbed doesn't hurt, but um, the way that they went about this is just cruel and vindictive. Um, but this is not the same Rocksteady uh, that you grew up with, so just take heart in that a little bit. Uh, over the years, uh, various Rocksteady members have been leaving the company in droves. Um, this last stint of the Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is the last of uh, most of the old guard, and they'll be leaving, including Sefton Hill. Nobody knows why, but I think that the reason why Rocksteady allegedly is breaking apart is Warner Media rejecting their Superman pitch, uh, Batman pitch, and greenlighting the Suicide Squad just because the Suicide Squad was a popular movie at the time. That's the only reason. And I also think it's because of the outcome of the Suicide Squad game. Not just the whole live service thing. I think that what they'd done to their canon, some of them actually have a soul. And they're deep down upset about what they did. And to make amends, they're leaving the company. That's what I feel like. I could be wrong. I mean, I've met a lot of people in the game industry over the past 20 years, and they don't really care about anything. They certainly don't care about their fans. But uh, I still can't believe that they went ahead and did this, because basically what they did is they've made the entire journey of Batman, from Arkham Origins all the way through Arkham Knight, completely meaningless. So we're just going to do this point blank to get this out of the way. We're going to rip off the Band-Aid together, and then we can all mourn and discuss what this means for the overall franchise. No easy way to say this. In footage that was leaked, Batman's death was revealed, and Harley's the one that pulls the trigger, literally. Batman has a very unceremonious and non-heroic death, thanks to Harley Quinn. The sad thing is, the original leaks that people were very dismissive about uh, that happened, I think it was a year and a half ago, the idea that The Flash was going to basically reboot the entire DC game universe, which made sense. I mean, that's what Flash is there for. He's the MacGuffin character. When things go awry, you send him back in time and, you know, that's that's how you reboot and fix things and give people hope for the continuation of the thing you love. Also, Batman, even though he did die in the original leaks, he had a heroic death trying to fight Brainiac's mind control and help out the Suicide Squad. There's none of that in these new leaks, allegedly. And the reason why is because it ruins what came before it. Ruins all of it. And you could argue, well, you could always take the point of view that, you know, it's all non-canon, like Arkham Origins and its inconsistencies. And it's like, yeah, you could. But the problem is this thing exists. And for a lot of people, this will be the end of Batman's story. And the reason why this is hard is not only does it ruin the Arkham Batman and everything that he went through, through all his games, especially what he went through a night, where his greatest fear was to see himself live long enough to become the villain. That's the entirety of Arkham Knight. After Batman is doused with Scarecrow's fear toxin inside of Ace Chemicals, and he hallucinates seeing the Joker all the time, his horrific fear that drives him to do the right thing in that game is basically turning into the Batman who laughs. 
And if you guys don't know anything about the Batman who laughs, he's essentially a Jokerized version of Batman who then, you know, uh, calls over all his sidekicks, Nightwing, Robin, Oracle, Batgirl, Alfred, Commissioner Gordon, and then murders them all in the Batcave while laughing. While he doesn't have a smile on his face, and we don't really know how it happens, what we can pretty much surmise is that the entire Bat family is dead in the Suicide Squad universe, which I refuse to call it the Arkham universe. And Batman is the killer. And probably the, the hardest thing to stomach about all of this is it happens off panel, off screen. It's just kind of like a joke. You see Tim Drake's skeleton and Oracle and I believe Nightwing and Alfred and it's just kind of like, you know, they're dead. Haha. -ha. It's wrong because it takes the rich legacy of these characters and it just makes them null and void. And uh, the reason why I have such an investment in these characters is I've spent almost 15 years of my life studying them. The Arkham franchise was much better for me than comic books. Uh, even like the Bronze Age and Chuck Dixon run of the 90s. The storytelling that Paul Dini orchestrated in Asylum and City is like it is a great story from beginning to end. Even the little side stuff and the bios that are in the game, it's great lore. And it paints a very vivid picture of what this Gotham, this universe is like. And now all of that has just been, you know, doused in gasoline and lit on fire. And for what? For brownie points on Twitter? Batman fans have already had to go through the death of Batman three times in 2022. The passing of Kevin Conroy, and then the death of the Gotham Knights Batman twice. Once at the beginning at the hands of Rachel Ghoul, and then at the end of the game, blowing himself up. So Batman's deaths in video games have not been very heroic or very interesting. They've all felt like cheap gimmicks. And uh, this latest one, I mean, hey, it lives up to the name of the game. That's all you can really say. But it hurts because it's like losing Kevin all over again. Now, Kevin didn't sign up for bad projects. Sometimes bad projects just ended up happening that he was a part of. He didn't know the killing joke was going to be terrible. That was Bruce Timm's fault. He didn't know that the Batwoman show was going to be terrible. That's on the Batwoman writers. They actually had a different live-action Batman in mind before they reached out to Kevin. So when he signed up to reprise his role in the Suicide Squad, I think that he did it because he was trying to do fan service for people, as well as, you know, he needed the work. And um, he thought maybe this would be something more. Maybe they'd somehow revise the Arkham games. We'll never know because Kevin's not with us anymore. But it's hard to bury Batman again, especially the way that it's handled. It's just very disrespectful. Now, from a logical point of view, the reason why this is getting such an emotional connection and resonating with the audience is this is not the Arkham games that we're accustomed to. Uh, see... Arkham Asylum, if you guys didn't know that, I'll, I'll teach you. It was a celebration of 70 years of Batman's history, and it was done not as a mockery like the Suicide Squad game. It was done as a tribute, as a homage to everything that was great about Batman, from Batman the Animated Series, with Paul Dini's writer involved, and the alumni of Kevin Conroy, Arlene Sorkin, and Mark Hamill reprising their roles. It was almost like a, an adult version of that thing you loved as a child. And it was handled with such care and love and respect. And the WB games of late, starting with Gotham Knights, I mean, that was a straight-up mockery of the Bat family. Uh, if you go and you listen to a lot of the story, a lot of the narrative is just talking points that you would hear on Twitter or Tumblr or TikTok. Um, very social and political and just very uh, divisive and, um, you know, very supportive of one type of political ideology. Whereas the original Batman medium, like, you go through and you watch the animated series and you point to me where you can tell specifically what it is those characters are relating back to real-world events. You can't. Uh, Batman the Animated Series is a timeless thing that everyone can enjoy even 80 years from now assuming most of us are around 80 years from now. Um, it was a love letter to Batman fans from Batman fans, and the Arkham games were the same way. Um, Arkham Asylum was just something that they never thought they would make a sequel of. 
And that's why there's so many lore inconsistencies between Arkham Asylum and Arkham City is because Arkham City kind of, essentially, I would argue, started the whole Arkham franchise because it, it paints a more vivid picture of and connects certain events. Whereas, uh, just for you know, playing devil's advocate, Nightfall is mentioned uh, periodically throughout the bios of certain characters in Arkham Asylum, but it's never really brought up in Arkham City. So while the Nightfall event did happen in Arkham Asylum, it's never brought up again or maybe even ever happened in Arkham City because you meet Azrael. So who replaced Batman when Batman had his back broken? Um, you know, Bane also doesn't really mention about breaking Batman again because they were referencing the famous Chuck Dixon storyline in Arkham Asylum because, again, it was a 70-year celebration of Batman as an entire entity. And Arkham City was kind of like Rocksteady's like, all right, we're going to take what we did with Batman, but we're going to put our own spin to it and create our own universe. This isn't going to be... Just kind of like grabbing different parts of Batman's mythos and just jamming it into like one story like Paul Dini was doing. And I think Dini did a great job, but the reason why Arkham City is so beloved by so many people and has like the highest Metacritic score for superhero games is it is a story that is cohesive. It is a story that is compelling. It is a story that is exciting. And it's a story that makes sense. There are parts of Arkham Asylum that just go all over the place, right? But, again, so much care and love and respect was thrown throughout all the Arkham games. Even Arkham Origins, which doesn't necessarily borrow from the pre-52 or pre-Flashpoint, you know, DC Comics that Paul Dini was using for inspiration. They charted their own course based on the new 52. You could argue that they also showed respect and love and adoration for Batman. And whatever happened after Arkham Knight, the people responsible for the Suicide Squad are mocking everything there is about Batman, about his characters, about his sidekicks, about his city. And that doesn't sit well with me because I think that it's, you know, not right. So it is totally worthy of my scorn and yours. Because it's not handled correctly. There's so many different ways that I could have seen uh, the Batman games continue after Arkham Knight. They could have done an Arkham Beyond, which they tried with Damien. Um, they could have done a flashback game with, um, you know, finding out what happened to Batman's first meeting with Ra's al Ghul, which where they were building and building and building. They um, teased it in Arkham Origins. They teased aspects of uh, the mystery involved with, you know, the War of Shadows and Arkham Knight. There was things that they could have built upon and, and satisfied fans craving another adventure. And this is not what we wanted. Not even the least bit. And I just want you to know that you guys and gals have every right to be angry at Rocksteady and WB Games. Your anger is justified. So don't let people gaslight you on Twitter and tell you that, you know, you having an emotional reaction to a video game makes you weak. You care about something, and that's a good thing. You grew up with this. You love it. Um, you probably play through it just as much as I do a year. And you really soak up everything about this world and the characters, and you enjoy the games. And you're hurt. I'm hurt, too. You know, I feel your pain, too. I really do. There's a right way and a wrong way to handle your anger and your rage. I don't think anybody should be lashing out at Rocksteady, even if they're incompetent. I don't think people should be, you know, petitioning WB Games. If you really want to hurt them, don't buy the game. That's my advice to you. You're not in the same boat as me that has to play it regardless of if you hate it or not, like I did Gotham Knights. If you're really hurt by this, you don't have to support it. My beef with this game is the fact that they took all that rich history and they just tore it up into tiny pieces. And... For me, this is going to impact how I look at the Arkham games going forward. It really is. Um, because I know the truth. I know what happens. And uh, that's going to be hard. That's going to be something that I'll have to try to keep in the back of my mind whenever I look at these games again. And I probably will, because I really enjoy these games. I'm going to be playing Arkham Origins on Christmas Eve again. 
Like tradition, this year I'll be doing the Adam West suit. So like I said, I don't really care about what happens to the rest of the characters. I mean, you can probably figure that they all die. But the hardest thing about all this is what it does to the Arkham games as a whole. And then just to flush all that down the toilet, it's just terrible. In hindsight, the whole um, James Gunn, you know, rushing to Twitter to say, hey, we're still going to do stuff with the Arkham games. It kind of feels like he was trying to jump in front of this bullet that he knew was coming. Because, I mean, like James Gunn or not, the guy is a comic book fan. He loves DC characters like Batman and Superman. He just does. He grew up with them. He's a big nerd like the rest of us. So maybe he was trying to do his best to kind of shield fans from um, what was inevitable. These leaks. And I'm sorry that I didn't get into all the other leaks. Again, I don't really care for all the additional characters or, you know, the whole multiverse aspect. You can go watch somebody else's video. I just wanted to talk about uh, what this means for Batman and what this means for, you know, the Arkham franchise that we loved from Origins all the way through Night and what it means and what, how basically we, we've been Disney-fied. It's like... The Last Jedi all over again. Taking a beloved character that you wanted to see return, bringing back the original actor, only to basically piss on the character. But anyway, now I want to hear from you. Um, how do you feel about uh, what uh, Rocksteady did to Batman? Are you upset? Are you mad? Or you just don't care? Let me know in the comments section below. There's no right or wrong answer. I might see you as a soulless husk of a human for saying that, you know, it's just a video game. But again, I have a, you know, attachment to these games, as well as most of my audience does. Um, we've spent a lot of time with these games and really immersed ourselves in this universe. And to see it reduced to this is just, it's uh, pretty soul-crushing. Originally, I was going to do a video talking about what James Gunn said about keeping the Arkham stuff alive. But uh, now I'm just going to kind of wait and see and... Find out what happens with the Suicide Squad game. I don't think it's going to do well. I'm going to play it, but I doubt a lot of people will watch because they're going to be upset. Also, I mean, I can't promise I'm not going to rant and tear down certain things or make fun of, you know, Rocksteady when I'm playing the game or streaming it. You know? uh, my, uh, my rage will kind of fester and boil, <laughs> and then it'll explode a little bit. Um, I've never shied away from being honest and truthful or, you know, giving criticism when criticism is due. To these new game developers, their games are perfect. They spend all this time on it. How dare, how dare you say anything wrong with the game that they put their whole being into, which they didn't put their whole being into. This game is a mess from top to bottom. This game was always going to be a mess, but they didn't need to go and do the fans or the franchise dirty. And I'll never forgive them for that. And I hope you won't either. But uh, take care, everybody. If I don't see you again, have a Merry Christmas. And uh, I plan on uh, doing a video about an Arkham Origins sequel that you guys don't know about. And uh, discussing that in detail, because it'll be fun. Probably won't be until January, though, because I don't really get on this channel very much. But if you enjoyed the video, like and share it. Share it with five friends, and then five more friends. and. Maybe we can get some like-minded people in to, uh, you know, kind of mourn with us. Because that's what this is. We're, we're grieving. I don't personally hate Rocksteady, but I'm not happy with them. I don't like what they did to my boy. They massacred my boy. And uh, they killed my favorite characters that were side characters. Just for lulls. So. They could have just made it an Elseworlds game. But nope. They just had to take our favorite thing, twist it, and then burn it to pieces. Awesome. All right, guys. Thanks so much. I'll catch you later, Gothamites. Have a great holiday and uh, happy new year. Stay safe, everybody. Hope to see you here uh, next year. Peace.